Okay, let's turn this off, turn this off. All right, how do we do this? How do we do this? All right, so let's focus on creating the structure first, as we always do. Okay, so let's create the structure. I'm going to let's break this down. Um, I'm not going to do the left nav. Let's just make. Let's see here. Let's see here. I'm thinking. Th I'm thinking, do we use grid or flex? I'm more of a fan of grid than flex. So I'm going to use grid, make two columns. So you have column one, column two. And then in column one, I have all these text links. Okay, so we'll make text links. We'll do the gold line later, but let's just do text links for now. And then I need... I need a way to overlap all these images and have some swiping thing. But at the same time, I want to make sure this is scalable so I don't have to make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I don't have to make eight different interactions. So how do I make it scalable? I don't know. I'm just going to go forward and see what happens. All right. Blank page. All I have is three images. So we're going to do three instead of eight. Um, let's go. First thing I'm going to do is what just happened? There we go. Control or Command E for quick find. Type in grid. We got a grid. It's a two column grid. Congratulations. We're going to delete, um, okay, cool. My magnifier works. i uh, going to delete a row because we only need one row. Let's take away the gap in between the two columns right here. Gaps zero. There we go. And let's turn off edit grid. Set the height here to 100 VH because we want to set that the whole height of the, whole height of the page. Good, good. Now, on uh, column one, let's go ahead and control E, type in div. Um, JTEL, create one interaction that put, pushes out the swipe overlay and then pulls it back and it resets it to the original state. Then just make that class interaction. E, okay, yeah. Okay, we'll get there. I, I, I see what you mean, JTEL. I think that's the answer too. All right, so let's see here. Okay, so it has to be center, center. So let's go ahead and make this, let's call this uh, column one. And we're gonna set this to flex, center, center. So the child element will be center, center. So if I add another div in here, there we go. And let's, set this to a max width of, I don't know, 75% of its parent and expand it. Okay, cool. That's what I want. And now let's add some text links, text link. And there we go. And I'll call this text link. Let's go ahead and make it display block. So it's the whole width. Let's add some padding. We'll say like 20. Let's make the width of, or it's the size of this. Hi, Abin from India, welcome. So there we go. We'll do something like this with the font being what all the kids are using anyways. Montserrat, no underline. All right, we'll use we we'll use three, three, three for now. And there we go. And let's make this medium. All right. Um, text link one. Copy paste. Text link two. Text link three. All right. So we have our three text right there. How about Wix's ad animation on Webflow? It could be fun. 
Um, I've never seen it, but you know, if you want to submit that as a stream idea, go for it. All right, so you have these three. And then we need to, we need a div that does that swishing thing. They go whoosh, 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 whoosh. All right, so I'm guessing we put that in column two. Um, okay, yeah, so we put that in column. So let's create a div. And we're gonna call this column two, right there. And shortcut, oh wait, that's for, yeah, that's right. So shortcut, how I named column two without even having to click here is I pressed control or command enter, all right? Hotkeys, hotkeys. All right, because I'm gonna have things overlapping each other, because I'm gonna have this swiping door effect overlapping like that, um, I want this on top of everything in column two. So I'm going to make this parent element, column two, position relative, all right? Now I'm gonna add a div, and this one we're gonna call it um, sliding door. <laughs> okay, so this is the sliding door, and this sliding door is going to be position absolute set to left. And the reason why I'm setting it to left is because I want that to be anchored to the left. And so when I do a width, it's going to start from the left and always be anchored to the left. So that's all I'm gonna be doing with the animation, the interaction is just setting the width, going to 100 and back down to zero, all right? So uh, for now, I'm gonna set this to 100 so I can see what I'm working on. Set the background to uh, a slight gray. I think that's what he's using. So we'll just do that. EF, 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 EF. And now I'm gonna set it back to zero. Cool. Now that we have that, let's go ahead and do our first interaction. Let's do the sliding door interaction. Let's see here. Let me recap. He does that. So what if I go like this? Huh. Penny is here. Better late than never. Welcome. Welcome back. All right. Well, let's just see where this goes. So what I'm gonna do is, with my text link selected, I'm gonna click on the interactions, element, add an element trigger, mouse hover. On hover, start animation. What? Oh, Ricky Burgess. Thanks for subscribing. Um, timer animation, I'm gonna press plus, and we're gonna call it sliding door, uh, we're gonna say sliding door close because it's, you know, the door is closing. All right, now we're gonna select this sliding door. So what we did was we're adding the element trigger to this. So if someone hovers on this, we're going to affect this. So that's why I've clicked on the sliding door. I'm gonna set the size to 100, 100%, 100 and there we go. And I'm gonna set the ease to out court. You can choose whatever feels right to you. Yep, there we go. Cool, see, just like that, and done. So hover out, I'm gonna start animation. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to duplicate this. Rather than recreating it from scratch, I can duplicate. And I'm gonna call this sliding door open. Instead of the size being 100%, I'm gonna set it to 0% so it's back down there. All right, let's do a test. All right, 
cool, cool. Now let's go ahead and test some more. So I'm going to test by, let's go ahead and save that. I'm going to go and down here, rather than setting the interaction uh, manually to each text link, I can just tell Webflow, hey, anything with that same class name, go ahead and apply the trigger on, okay? So you can tell there's an interaction trigger right here because there's a lightning bolt. Rather than doing it manually, I can just go here to the bottom right and say, set this trigger on everything with a class of text link. And then there you go. So now if you look here, all three text links have that lightning bolt. So I did it that quick. Here we go, open, close, open, close, open. Okay, cool. So if I go like this, it doesn't break it. Nice. Okay. Oh, whoops. Okay. <laughs> All right, cool. Bailey, Joseph, you're not late. You're here on time. Don't worry. <laughs> so that worked. Um, cool. All right. So we have that working. All right. The next thing we want to do is let's go ahead and do the text thing. So let's just do the easy thing where the text turns, turns gold. All right. So let's change this to be a lighter gray like this. All right. So this is not an interaction. This is just a CSS hover where on hover change font color to gold. All right. So I'm going to go here to states. A lot of people miss this little icon, but um, this little drop down, but that's how you enter the states. So on hover, let's go ahead and change this color to I love gold. That was my stupid Austin Powers <laughs> impression. Yeah, I'll stick to web design. Okay, so there we go. That's that's pretty gold right there. All right, so we have that gold. And to make sure that we have... Uh, so if I just preview it right now, it just turns to gold. It's not fading to... It's not fading to the gold color. So what I need to do is add a transition, a CSS transition, okay? And so to do that is I click on my text link and I make sure that on this dropdown, I'm using none, all right? I'm using the none state. And then I go down here, scrolling down, scrolling down to transitions. Press plus, set the type to font color there it is typography font color and that's it so now if i preview it kind of fades to that color rather than just on and off switch do it with cms um dang it i should have done it with cms huh all right Good challenge. Let me let me figure out this basic one first, and maybe maybe it's doable. Um, hold on, hold on. Mm -mm. So, okay, cool. Just checking my notifications, make sure I'm not missing anything important. All right. So we have those set up. Let's do one more small thing before we get into the big image on the right. Uh, we should... Hmm. Okay, okay, I got it, I got it. So let's do that gold, that gold line right here. Oh, is that gold? Oh, wow, that's a small detail. That gold line actually has a border radius on there. That's, that's actually 
quite nifty. Okay, we'll do that. Scop Scopari, welcome. How are things going? Yeah, I'm going good. You're here, so I'm glad. All right, let's do that gold line. So Tyron, welcome. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap each of these text links inside of a div. I'll explain why soon, but let's go ahead and wrap them. Text link. Uh, we can just delete these two. So I don't have to recreate it three times. So we have this div block right there. I'm gonna add another div block before the text link. And let's set this one to flex horizontally center. And we're gonna call this text link wrapper. This one right here, we're gonna say um, hover line. I don't know. And this hover line is going to be, let's start the width at 75, okay? That way we can see what we're working with. We'll set a line height of, I'm gonna say three, not a line height, but um, a height, a pixel height of three. And let's push the text away by 12. And all these numbers, I'm just guessing. Um, yeah. And let's go ahead and use that gold color. Oh, I need to find that gold color. Let's go ahead and save that gold color in the swatch right there. There we go. Hover line, background color, gold. All right, that's huge. That's too big. Let's make this. With... Okay, so when we hover over this, when we hover over this, I want this line to go from zero pixels to 55 pixels, all right? And so one more thing with this, let's add a border radius of three so it looks a little classier. So it look, yeah, like that, cool. And I noticed that the text link ends right here. I want it to go the full width of this, of its parent. So what I can do is set this to a sizing of expand or grow if possible. That way, this is the hover area, the, the hit area for the text link. So if I hover over this, hmm, hold on. Maybe it shouldn't be hover over this. Maybe it should be hover over this whole link wrapper. Yeah, that'd be better. Okay, the reason why is, the reason why I say that is because, watch this. Um, if I, uh, let me show you why. So let's finish this uh, interaction. I'm gonna go here to interactions, mouse hover, sliding door close. And the hover line, we're going to add a size and the initial state, the initial state of this hover line should be zero pixels. Okay. And then the ending state should be 55. Save and let me go to door open. Let me click on hover line and the ending state of hover line should be zero. All right, and we can go ahead and set that to out court. And let me do that to the out court here on the hover state. Now watch what happens. So that's nice, right? That, that works. But what if I put my cursor here over the T? So that's why I'm like, mm, no, we should put it on the link wrapper so there's a bigger hitbox. So the hitbox, the hover state, is happening here, but the box is moving to the right, which makes that glitch and that loop happen. So we don't want that. So we're gonna delete the interaction, 
don't worry, the interaction timelines are still saved inside of Webflow. So if you delete it, you're still fine. So I'm gonna delete this, delete interaction, and let's go to text link wrapper, and we're gonna apply that same interaction mouse hover to text link wrapper instead. All right, and now we gotta fix something. So hover line is not a sibling of text link wrapper, so if I close this up, text link wrapper has no siblings. It has children. So this hover line is a child of text wrapper. And this sliding door is also, oh wait, that sliding door is all elements. So yeah, so save. And then this one right here, hover out, start animation. We're gonna do the open, and this hover line has to be a child. Save. Now if I preview, there we go. And if, even if I put my mouse over the link, even if I put my mouse over the text link, okay, so there we go. Now, all I have to do is copy paste. And there we go. Change the label. One, two, three. Preview. One, two, three. Smooth. Here, do you want to play around with it? I will post the link in chat. Mm -hmm. There we go. So, pretty fun to play with. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, the bigger issue. How do we do the image changing? So, I'm going to take a stab at it. And if I do it wrong, which I probably think I'll do it wrong, uh, someone needs to do it better. <laughs> Again, I am not a Webflow master. I am just a Webflow nerd. Okay, so I have column two selected because when I press Control or Command E and type in image, enter, I'm putting the image inside of column two. Choose image. Of course it's a Tesla. Why, Why did you think I was gonna use something else? <laughs> All right, let's uh, call this, um, We'll just call it image, whatever. Call it image. Uh, let's, cause I want all the images to stack on top of each other. I hope this is the right way. Um, because I want them to stack, stack up on top of each other, I'm gonna do position absolute. So let's go ahead and set this width or this position to absolute, set it to full. Let's set the width to 100% and the height to 100%. And it's stretching, but that's okay because the power of object fill or object fit cover, it scales so it doesn't stretch. Hi, Patrick, welcome. All right, so we have that. That's our base one. Mm -mm. Okay, I think we're fine. So I know the sliding door effect is not gonna work because the sliding door is not on a higher Z index. So I click on sliding door. I notice that the Z index is set to auto. I'm gonna set this to 10. All right, so that 10 there we go. All right, almost there. I'm feeling confident. All right, so this one is done. Let's go ahead and copy paste. And it looks like nothing happened, but I do have two images on top of each other now. And this second image, I'm gonna click on the little mini cog and then replace image. And there we go. And take the mini cog, 
and copy paste the image. So I have a third one, click on mini cog, replace the image. And there we go. Cool. Cool. And obviously the sliding door works, but all three images are showing and they're on top of each other. And like a sandwich, you're layering things on top of each other. Of course, the topmost layer is still going to be shown. So we got to do some hide and show. So let's number these. So this one will be image number one. So I'm giving it a combo class of one. This one is going to be a combo class of two. And this one is going to have a combo class of three. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want a separate interaction for each of the text links. And this is why when I'm thinking about, can this be done dynamically without code? Probably not. You would have to use code. So let's go to this first text link wrapper. We're going to add another hover. So you can add as many triggers to a single element, as many as you want. All right. So I'm adding a hover. And um, let's see here. What do I want to do? Hold on. Ah, OK. Sorry, one more thing. All of these images, the parent selector, the parent class name, I want all of them to be off. OK, so I need all of them to be off. So to do this, to get back to the parent selector, I can click on the, on this orange right here, and it shows me all of its inheritance. So I'm going to click on image, and now we're editing the parent class, and I'm going to set this to display none. I'm going to hide it. So all three images are gone, and you can tell by this eyeball with a strike through it. It's display none. Cool. Now back to the first text link wrapper, mouse hover, on hover, start animation, and we're going to say show image one. I'm going to select image one, and this one is going to do a, it's going to do a hide show. So I'm going to do a display block so it shows it, save, and then on hover out. I'm just going to do hide image one. I'm going to go to image one, press plus. Uh, oh, not size. Plus hide show and hide it. OK. And this is why, again, I'm doing a combo class is because I only want to affect an element that has both of these classes. Not just image, but image and one. Since there's only one of those, it'll only affect that one image. Save, and let's see if it works. And... Kind of? I think I did it wrong. Wait. I'm missing something here. Oh! It needs, to, it needs, okay, it needs to close and then open. Oh, it just got more complicated. <laughs> oh, God. When something looks easy, that means it took a long time to learn and build. When something, yeah, when something, okay, it's easy to make something complicated. It's hard to make something easy. So this looks easy, but it was complicated to make. So now I'm like, oh God, my brain, my brain. Okay. I got this. I got this. <sighs> Let me go back. Let me go back to the sliding door. So it's supposed to close and then open. 
So take this sliding door and size it back down to 0% and out quart once it's done growing. Uh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Not, um, okay, not too hard then. Okay, so I'll, I, I, I just forgot that one more thing. Okay, another thing, I have to add some sort of delay because the image, notice how it's showing up immediately. So I need to wait for that sliding door to finish. So this sliding door takes 0.5 seconds, okay? It takes 0.5 seconds to to close the door so I need to remember that number and so when I go to back to my show image one I need to delay this by 0.5 seconds and then when I hide the image I think I think I also need to delete that by 0.5 seconds. Let's see here. What, what? Okay, wait, wait, okay. Oh, <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna end the stream because I don't know how to do it. I'm missing one last thing because look at if I go like this and then I remove my mouse nothing changes the door doesn't close again this doesn't change if he did custom code for this I'm gonna be mad yeah see it doesn't go away so what do I okay 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 I got this I got this I got this so we don't, we don't hide image. We don't, <laughs> what? Okay, so if I go like this, I show the image and I don't hide it, cool. Okay, but what happens with the other two? All right, let's, let's explore, let's explore together. Okay, so I have the door working correctly, I think. Okay, the door is working correctly. Okay, this is why I was getting kind of nervous with this, because I was like, it's, it seems too easy. I know I'm going to hit something, but here we go. This is it. Uh, element trigger, mouse hover, on hover, start animation. Uh, we're going to just duplicate this show image two, and then instead of pointing to image one, I can go here and just click in class and click on image two. Okay. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for three. I'm already feeling nervous because I already feel like this is probably the, not, probably the wrong way to do it, but I'm just going for it. All right, show number three, click here. Image number three, we're fine, save. All right, so that works, that works, that works. But wait, what if I go back to two? It's still picture number three. Patrick, such amazing timing. You'll see me implement this in some way, you're in true. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Patrick. Maybe a time delay on the trigger so it doesn't become too hysterical when dragging the mouse over the list. I'm wondering why. So here's the, the link. Here's the link about mm, tabs. No way. Is he using tabs? 
Okay, I'm gonna view source. Like, I feel like viewing source is like, you know, cheating. But I guess we're at that point. Is he using tabs? Answer? No, he is not. He's not using tabs. He's using interactions and not custom code. Is he using custom code? Let's see here. Um, button mobile? Nope. Wait. Oh, wait, no, that's a, that's, okay, that's a page transition. Page show, okay, that's, that's part of the, okay. Okay. Yeah, he's not using custom code for this. Oh, Blaze, what are you doing? I need to understand this trick. I feel like I'm almost, I'm like, so close, okay. Uh, what if you change the z-index of the other images when you hover? You see, that's the thing. You can't change z-index with interactions. Can you? Can, can you? Uh, let's go to number one. Show image one. Uh, yeah, there is no z-index except for rotate. But this Z is different. Is it under skew? Uh, skew, there is a Z. Oh, no, there's no, no. Not a scale, not a filter. Yeah. Why not just use opacity since the images are already stacked? I wonder if I have to go through each one and turn off the others. I feel like that's a that's just too much work, but I think that's where we are now. So here's what I mean. If I go to this image and um, I do a hide show for number two, and there we go. I display none. And then I click on image three and I do a hide show. Is this the answer? I feel like it's too much work though. Let's go here, image two. And, um, see, Webflow interaction sometimes glitches out. So look at class image two. However, it's highlighting image one. So weird. All right, anyways, I'm gonna go here, hide show, none. That's not image two, that's image one. What do you, anyways, there we go, image one. What do you, stop it. Image one should be hide. Image two, should be show. Image three should be hide. Why isn't it? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Whatever. All right. Should be hide. Save. All right. Let's go to the third one. Let's just delete this. All right. So image one hide with a delay of 0.5. And then image two, hide. Image three, see how much clicking? So imagine you have to do this for all eight. I feel like there's a better way. Okay, okay. Is that the answer? If that's the answer, then we've done it. But I feel uneasy. The reason why is because, sure, it's done. But I always like to think of the human on the other side. The human that will be, that will probably have to maintain this site going forward. Okay? That's what I always think about. Whether it be the client, 
uh, the client's uh, web designer or uh, webmaster who <laughs> uses that term um, uh, in the future. Like, what if I can't do any updates to the website or I have to do updates on the website? And then, like, have you ever been at a company as a web developer? And then next thing you know, you're they're like, OK, we need you to update the site. And then you've never touched that website. And then you walk in the door, you look at the code and you're like, what the F just happened? So you have to reverse engineer what that previous developer has done. You have to go through their code and their design and just be like, okay, where am I at? And it's easy for someone to just leave it and just be like, Figure it out. Whoever's in, future person, figure it out. I did my job. Bye. A better person would be like, how can I make this so whoever comes into the door can easily just copy and paste the link and all the interactions are done. All they have to do is change the link, change the, change the uh, link label, and change the image that shows up. That's why... Leaving it like this makes me feel uneasy. How can we make this scalable? And right now, I think the only way is with custom code. Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. All right, let's see what's in chat. Tyron, what if you change the z-index of the other images when you hover? Yeah, there is no... Yeah, there is no interaction for z-index. Yeah. Change the opacity. That's the same thing as hide show. Scapar Digital, in the action, can't you target and hide all images not related to the tab you're hovering? I think that's what we're doing right now. Bailey, you can right move perspective, move Z, child perspective on column two. Um, yeah, but Webflow Interactions does not. Is it the X or something? Or it is. Yeah, it doesn't. I know what you mean. Hold on. This 3D transform. Oh, wait, can I move on a Z? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I thought move is only X and Y. So if I take this one, I say move. There is a Z. Yep, but still there's the, there's a problem of making it scalable. Uh. Are there two image? Second one becomes visible. Yeah, I think it be can be done hiding the images on the left and sliding them to the right on hover and back to the original position on hover out, then sliding door just cover the movement. Hmm. Yeah, but still, um, how do you have this this element relate to this element? There's no, it's like a distant cousin. It's like, there's no such thing as distant cousin when it comes to Webflow. There's only parent, child, sibling. <laughs> like, how do I connect this all the way to here? in a scalable way it has to be done with code. So here, so here is how I would make it scalable. Maybe try using class adder. I don't think we have to use FinSuite class adder. Oh yeah, that would be nice. All right. So the beginning of the stream, that was for beginners, the structure and the simple text hover. This part of the stream is for intermediate. Let's go into advanced. I'm going to go and make this scalable with code. I think. 
Jeez. Well, hold on. Let me check. Do we have any sites that need to be reviewed? I want to make sure I give you guys time. Where? Let me see. Site review. Oh, we have four. All right. Um. Okay. Maybe I'll come back to this next week to finish off with custom code, or probably do it in the middle of the week offline, or not during a live stream. Just, just do a recording. But I think this is good to end off for now. This is the unscalable way to do things, which it's fine, but don't leave it like that. You want to make sure that not your like your future self is going to say, hey, thank you, past Nelson. Thank you for thinking about me and making sure that if I ever need to add or remove a link, you just copy and paste the link block. Thank you. You want to be like that. <laughs>